Let's now discuss the subjects of ice crystals. The conditions for ice crystal formation are found in areas of deep convection and in particular in the periphery of storm cells in the mature phase. These conditions are often found in oceanic maritime convection zones in the tropics and in layers of the atmosphere where the temperature ranges from minus 35 to minus 55 degrees C. In a convective cell, the particles are subject to strong updrafts that carry them up to the stratosphere. Once they reach the stratosphere, the particles move away from the area of highest ascending speeds, oscillating around the topopause. This shapes the anvil of the cumulonimbus. It is in the anvil that there is the highest concentration of ice crystals. If the wind velocity is negligible around the topopause, the anvil will spread in all directions around the cell. If the wind velocity is significant, for example due to a jet stream, the anvil will develop downwing of the convective cell. The density of ice crystals will be much higher and this area should be particularly avoided. What can a pilot observe from his cockpit in daytime? We observe a cumulonimbus with the central column and anvil. Obviously, pilots know that they must not enter the central column as it is prone to severe icing, turbulence and hail. They must also be aware of the risk of ice crystal in its anvil. How can a weather radar help? At the side of such a convective cell, the pilot will have on his radar display different shades of colors, ranging from magenta for turbulence, red for high reflectivity, to yellow and green for low reflectivity zone. The size and the low reflectivity of the ice crystals make them almost invisible for the weather radar. The green area will be an indication of low reflectivity, but will not exclude the presence of ice crystals. So it will be necessary to adapt the flight path accordingly. High concentration of ice crystals associated with significant exposure time could lead to engine surge. The crystals impact the aircraft structure, heated probes and engines, where they melt at the point of impact, and then flow over cold surfaces where they refreeze again. Pilots can also see the hazard conditions by observing the TAT, total air temperature measurement, that shifts to zero. The analysis of SIG weather charts allows pilots to spot possible areas of ice crystals. A deep convective zone combined with prevailing wind at the top of this convection strongly suggests the presence of ice crystals in the downwind zone of these convective cells. As summary, what do we have to remember about ice crystals? They can be found in highly convective areas, particularly in the tropics. They are present at the top of deep convection cells and more particularly in the anvils of cumulonimbus. Favorable temperatures are between minus 35 and minus 55 degrees Celsius. On the weather radar, they are generally present in low reflectivity zones displayed in green. Before the flight, on the meteorological documents, it is important to identify the convective zones under prevailing winds at the top of the layer. Ice crystals have a good chance of being at the periphery of the convective cells, more particularly downwind.